one last thing I want to talk about that you touched about before we go on to the, our final topic. Um, you kind of mentioned a little bit about pertuzumab combinations and affinity, but there was at San Antonio this year the Pertain study. And Pertain, you want to describe Pertain to us? Are you familiar with Yeah, so basically these are patients that got the standard chemo pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and then were randomized to adding the aromatase inhibitor on top of the backbone versus not, if, I, if it's a study. It was, no, it was AI, it was triple positive, getting chemo plus tras, then, and, and then AI is. randomized to her sept to pertuzumab trias. So I was pertuz close. You were close. Give me a little close. <laughs> close. So, right. And what, what's um, not terribly surprising is that, um, so Cleopatra, no one got an aromatase inhibitor after they finished the chemo backbone of the first line setting. And this is asking the question, is adding an AI in ER positive after you've done that kind of what I call the induction Cleopatra phase, does it help? And it did. Mm -hmm. So, but that's been our prize for a while. So I, I guess I'm not particularly surprised by the results and it didn't change my practice. For ER positive, HER2 positive breast cancer in the metastatic setting, it just makes sense. And now we have data to support that when you're done with the chemotherapy component, which is usually a taxane, um, when you're done with the taxane, remember to start the aromatase inhibitor. I'll have to, I, I will tell you, I've seen a couple of patients as second opinions because it's there's always this kind of like nerve-wracking moment where um, the chemo's done and they want to come see me. What else? I'm just doing the two antibodies. What else should I be doing right now? Where the aromatase inhibitor, we kind of forget about that. And yeah. this study would really argue that we should be adding it when we drop the chemo out. Yeah. Mark, any? No, I think that may, I mean, it's sort of been standard practice for us to treat the ER positive disease. I mean, it, right. it, I'm kind of a little surprised about but it. But it wasn't it allowed in Cleopatra, so that's why this study was yeah. important. Yeah. So, again, it's really interesting trying to reconcile B52, right, where there was no benefit to adding aromatase inhibition, oh. to pertain and other trials like it where there is. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> That's know, an know, early know, stage know, study versus compare, metastatic. I, get it. I, I, I mean, PCR versus yeah, metastatic PCR versus disease. Response. I mean, or I versus agree. survival. But in terms of tumor biology, I think there's one difference. In the <coughs> B52, the um, endocrine therapy was combined with chemo. Mm. But here in Pertain, we are adding the AI after the chemotherapy is completed, only to the antibodies. And I think so there might be something about combining chemo with um, endocrine therapy versus combining endocrine yeah. therapy with anti-herdotherapy. Yeah, good point. 